Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spock. Can I show you the comic book run up? We've got a decently sized haul today, so let's get started. Kicking things off, we've got Immortal X Men number five. Tying into Avengers, X Men Avengers, or Eternals, Judgment Day. Now, this is, to be perfectly honest, this is kind of the issue I've been waiting for, because uh, when it, when, well, at least when it became clear that uh, Immortal X Men was going to issue each issue, at, at least presumably the first 12 issues, would focus on a member of the Quiet Council. That said, Exodus is, uh, I don't want to necessarily say favorite character, but it's a character I, I do enjoy, and um, his, uh, his first appearance was one of the first comics I ever bought. And, um, well, after 1993, he really hasn't done anything huge. He's just been kind of there. They always say, oh, he's, he's so powerful. And, well, yeah. Anyway, so, in uh, Judgment Day number one, the Eternals launched their attack. Um, their primary targets were the five. Um, Egg was killed, and Jack of Knives, the Eternals' assassin, was stopped from killing Hope by um, Wolverine. So we get a lot. We get some uh, background on uh, on X's, namely when he for how how he came to first meet Apocalypse uh, during the uh, during the Crusades. Um, but it's a memory to when he first met. Like I said, when he first met Apocalypse. Um, wandered through a desert and he saw a vision of, of a phoenix. So, uh, the issue largely takes place during Judgment Day number one with them discuss with the Quiet Council discussing the fact that, okay, yes, we now know that the Eternals are going to be coming for us. Um, the suggestion is made to, uh, Brief the war captain to prepare a defense. Emma stating that Scott will have plans. He always does. But uh, Shaw explains that uh, offense is what's needed rather than defense. But it turns out that uh, around the time that Exodus first encountered Apocalypse, he also bumped into Cersei of the, of the Eternals. While they're debating everything, however, um, the psychic attack occurs. Uh, turns out that when Exodus first met Apocalypse, Apocalypse asks him, you know, kind of prove yourself, and you know, to do so, he was to uh, kill uh, a, a human, a long-standing friend of his. The Black Knight. But he refused and uh, turned from Apocalypse and went on about his what. But, um, but he reflects on his past. Uh, after turning on Apocalypse, he was placed in stasis and Magneto found him. And he fought alongside Magneto, but, uh, well, Magneto was lost him time and, over, time and time over, all too flawed and not a messiah, he states. That meant the messiah was ahead of him. But, uh, and so, after the attack, um, Hope, Emma, and Exodus 
join together psychically to go after the, the Unimind. Emma forming a, a crystalline shield while for access to, to bear and uh, Hope forming a fiery sword. The Unimind presents itself as a, a multi-headed dragon. Exodus being a knight. Knight, dragon. Nice little uh, it's explained that uh, they move together, pierce the scales. They are in their chest, slashing and burning. Exodus says he sees them. And he, uh, but he managed to defeat them. But he managed, the Unimind is defeated. Um, there's further talk of Exodus's past. They, after, um, before House of M and the Decimation, Exodus was lo feeling lost and flew to the sun. Or, no, actually, no, it was after this mission. Apparently, uh, after the, the birth of Hope, however, he was when he returned to Earth. But uh, after the fight with the Unimind, the, uh, well, um, Druig makes his, his statement and the Hex attacks, and so... Exodus once again goes to fight the dragons. And it looks, and from the last page, it looks like he, <laughs> he's gonna do, he, he will, uh, he's gonna do some work. That is where the issue ends. Apparently our next issue, I think we'll be focusing on, yes, Sebastian Shaw. Uh, this was, like I said, this is the issue I was kind of, this is an issue I've kind of been waiting for. Exodus is a character, not a favorite, it's just that you, when you're told a character is so powerful for so long and then they don't do anything, well, it's nice to find them, see, finally see them, you know, do something. Actually show how powerful they are. So, Moving on to our next book, also a Judgment Day time, we've got X-Men Red, number five. So, also in Judgment Day, Judgment Day number one, Uranus of the uh, Internals spent an hour on Araka committing genocide. Nightcrawler was able to escape and Cable was uh, resurrected. So, um, Brand Cable and Magneto brief the Iraqi about the Eternals, with the question being, where's Storm? Um, it's explained Storm is briefing the Quiet Council. The uh, Uranus' arrival, however, is heralded by the betrayal of Iska the Unbeaten. Keep in mind that with Iska's mutant power, the ability to never lose, well, that means if she's on the, if she, it looks like she's on the losing side of a battle, she switches sides. And she does, she shows this by killing one of the, the uh, other members of the Great Ring. Um, Nightcrawler takes Iska off the off the table or off the board. Magneto, Brand, and Cable go up against Uranus. Apparently, um, uh, 
Uranus has uh, armories on Araco. But um, the ships in his armories attack. Um, the various various elements of his, of his armory, I should say, attack. Um, Looks like Sword Station 2 has been destroyed. Um, Legion goes up against Uranus. And falls. Nova does what he can to help uh, people evacuate uh, Port Prometheus. Iska is kept occupied. Cable has a, uh, <laughs> a massive gun drawn to the teleported to him. Uranus rips out Magneto's heart. Also, Euros kills Cable and Brand. After an hour, he leaves. One of the council members was uh, kept hidden in stasis, so to speak. Or Serata is not dead, but injured, badly injured. And somehow Magneto is still alive with a gaping hole in his chest. And that is where the issue ends. The promise of the hour of Magneto. Okay then. So that's what happened on that's what happened on Mars. Whew. That was something. Moving on to our next book, we've got Legion of X number four. We're not yet to the point of Legion of X tying in with uh, Day of Judgment. It will be, I think, either next month or the month after. So, um, Where we left off, the, uh, the Skinjacker seemingly been caught, but caught and imprisoned. But... Uh, One of the uh, prisoners, one of, I don't want to say inmates or prisoners, but one of those within the altar who's working uh, working through their uh, their trauma, Polly, is killed by apparently a familiar face. The face is familiar to him, but we can't really see it. And the skinjacker is then freed. Um... On Krakoa, <laughs> Weaponless Zen and uh, Nightcrawler uh, enjoyed each other immensely, apparently. Much of the issue is, uh, much of the narration is seems to be a previous conversation where they talk about them having somewhat of a post postcoital debate, I guess. So, hey, you know, that's cool. You know. Um... But uh, she returns to uh, she returns to Araco and uh, on Krakoa, Juggernaut uh, meets with Xavier, and then Legion shows up. Apparently he thinks there's a no place hidden where uh, hidden where they're at on Krakoa. Um, Xavier promptly turns uh, Juggernaut's mind off and says, "You know there there aren't they, no there's no way there's a no place." 
And but then uh, Legion points out um, that one of his eyebrows is missing. Um, War Warlock tells Legion that it does not appear there's there's, a no, there's other, any other no places. And as as connected to the island as Warlock is, he's one of the people who would definitely know. Um, Kurt returns to the altar and finds it in chaos. Glob Herman is the current uh, vessel for, for the Skinjacker. Um, the Skinjackers are driven out by by an assault by uh, Chamber, but then the Skinjackers leaps into uh, Chamber, and Nightcrawler literally kicks the Skinjacker out of Chamber, and utilizing Dust forces the Skinjacker into himself. On a rock, a weaponless Zen is seeing. Sees various bits of uh, vandalism that appear, appear to have been committed by a worshiper of uh, the rogue god that they're chasing. But something strange has happened. Those who survive, those who survived these these attacks have banded together and formed mutant circuits. Inside the uh, mindscape of the Skinjacker, um, Nightcrawler conf confronts the, 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 uh, the rogue god. We're, get, we're, led to, we're initially led to believe that it might, act, it might be Loki, I would say especially due to the fact of Loki being on the cover, but It's apparently all the trickster gods rolled into one. Tumult, the trickster chimera, and he disgusts himself. But uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt, and Tumult have a spirited discussion. With Kurt suggesting to believe in, believe in himself, and saying that perhaps he should try and do the same thing, you know, or Tumult should try having faith in himself. You know, start by having faith in himself so much as needing others to have faith in him. And with Nightcrawler, kind of maybe he's saying he does the same thing. There's also a, a memo from uh, from Xavier to uh, Nightcrawler, wanting to wanting updates. Uh, on Kane's movements, wondering what's happened to Banshee, as well as uh, a request that the that any detainees within uh, the altar be uh, turned over to the Black Council, at least eventually. But uh, Legion shows up at the altar, and Skinjacker tries to grab him, but uh, Skinjacker's fighting him off. Meanwhile, um, Weaponless Zen has, met, has returned to Aura Serrata, or has finally reported to, gone to report to Aura Serrata, only it's revealed but to uh, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler by Tumult that uh, Aura Serrata appears to be the worshipper of Tumult on Araco. And that is where the issue ends. It should also be noted that uh, when Weaponless Zen showed up to report to Aura Serrata, well, apparently Serrata's underlings were led to a strict orders concerning Weaponless Zen. Moving on to our next book, we've got X-Men 92, House of, House of 92, number 3. Um, where we left off, things were, we got the Benny Lives of Jubilation X um, 
and the further uh, growing of this alternate version of Krakoa. This issue, by and large, um, seems to uh, riff on uh, Ten of Swords. Wolverine's called the Council Chambers. Uh, Forearm is there, seemingly dead. He and uh, Arclight had gone through a gate, uh, ending up in a realm that looks, as Arclight put it, so it looks like some nerd's tabletop campaign. Forearm is attacked, and a crystal is uh, delivered to brought by Arclight to Apocalypse from Archon the Thunderer. A challenge, either you know, kind of a, you know, defeat. Bring ten sword, bring your ten swordsmen, bring ten sword sword bearers, and uh, we'll fight it out for for the other half of Krakoa, Araco. The ten are uh, Archangel, Psylocke, Solar, Rogue, Cyclops, Wolverine, Silver Samurai, Storm, Shatterstar, and Nightcrawler. We also get a fun little uh, information page on uh, Archon, but done like a uh, a D and D monster manual entry. Doesn't have a challenge rating though, which is kind of kind of lame. But oh well. Um, forearm is uh, resurrected, but he comes out a bit more um, volatile and with two extra arms. So beast beast having been resurrected, go leaves goes to go goes to uh, Pulmacus to. Uh, Inform the apocalypse and his sword sword bearers that whatever they do, they cannot die, and they have to avoid dying on in Pulmacus. Um As for Archon's uh, sword bearers, we've got Juggernaut, Eric the Red, Horseman, War, Pestilence, and Famine, Miss Marvel, Sauron, Brood or Brood. Lady Deathstrike and Arcade. So the battle is joined. Interesting note: um, Juggernaut is not wielding really a sword, but rather a giant hammer, rather similar to the hammer that he uh, wielded as uh, Kurth, Breaker of Stone, in Fear itself. But uh, Solar is promptly killed by War. And Bruder Brood is revealed to be uh, basically a uh, a giant mech, brood-shaped mech being controlled by Deadpool. The, the mech, however, falls on uh, Beast and Silver Samurai. Psylocke uh, jams her uh, psychic knife through Deadpool's head, Wolverine fights Deathstrike, and we get a, and uh, we get we get our uh, we, we we get the uh, the Electra shot. For those unaware, the what I, what I refer to as the Electra shot. Um, I don't remember the exact issue of Daredevil from the eight, from Frank Miller's run, but uh, there was a fight between an iconic fight scene between Bullseye and Electra. It ends with Bullseye running the Electra through, and it's done almost the pose is it is exactly like that panel there. But uh, the big the the main event fight is Apocalypse versus Archon. However, before it can begin, Genesis, Apocalypse's wife, beheads Archon, takes his crown and gives it and. But places it on Apocalypse's head. Um, they but they're going to rebuild Pulmacus and 
Archangel opts to stay behind, mend things with with Apocalypse and the other three horsemen, and uh, the mutants of Araka are going to be joining the mutants of Krakoa. Um, the Resurrections for Silver Samurai, Solar, and Beast seem to have gone a bit differently. Silver Samurai seems to be a gold samurai. Solar who appears to, have, to be more nocturnal. And Beast is, seems to be gray and have a rather dark personality. Um, Xavier states that uh, so he shudders to think how the human governments will react to a sudden doubling of the mutant population and Magneto suggests that uh, perhaps it's time that they were done with Earth. With the, uh, tease, of the, the tease of uh, the next issue's cover clearly being a reference to uh, Planet Size X-Men and the uh, um, the taming of, of Araco, or, or well, at least the terraforming of Araco, I should say. But that is where the issue ends. It was, it was a, I like the idea that, that at this point you're kind of just riffing off of uh, other stories from within the the Krakoan Age. I'm digging it. Moving on to our next book, we've got uh, Magic the Gathering number 17, and as always, we've got the Hidden Planeswalker variant, so our this month being Zendikari, Elvish Zendikari, uh, Zendikari Elvish uh, Planeswalker Nissa Ravain. Who sadly, I don't think, has even has yet appeared in the series at all, and that's a damn shame. Where we left off, um, Chandra, Garuk, Davriel, Kane, and Nico had it had come up with a plan. Since Chandra and Garuk couldn't go, couldn't really go to uh, Ravnica because, well. Their faces are plastered all over the all over the plane. Nico could because he's not a well-known planeswalker. So apparently, now where we start, Nico is claiming to have failed. Injuries being bound, presumably tea being prepared for him. But six six hours near. Nearly six and a half hours earlier, um, he plays walks to Ravnica. Uh, apparently, it was it was a bit of a shock to him. He'd been to cities, but never seen so much city. He was able to interact with he he had a bit of a guide in the form of Kaya's ghost form. But Kaya's ghost form can only show up in his mirrors. So the tether, this is that she's talking about ghost form. The tether had, this was because of Tetheret. Um, however, her ghost form isn't like it was when uh, Nico met her previously. No one could see her or hear her. She couldn't, and she couldn't touch anything. But she's able to, apparently, uh. uh Ral, Kaya, and uh, Vraska all have uh, mm. their own personal hells, their their own personal tortures. Ral is powering a uh, well. Ral is given a uh, a problem with one with one simple solution. His problem, the kept his captivity. No door on Ral's cell or no lock and no guard to speak of. At any moment, Ral can simply release the, the contact points, stop channeling his lightning into whatever 
device Tesmer wishes him to, and walk out the door. But the moment his foot crosses the threshold, his husband, Tomic Roma, or Vrona, would die. A problem with a, a simple and unthinkable solution. Kaya being trapped in her ghost form. As for Vraska, control of her uh, of her Gorgon's gaze. She, she's lost control of her Gorgon's gaze. And uh, she's in a room that is populated with uh, clones of, J of Jace. But uh, Nico continued searching for answers until he came upon Tezzeret. But apparently Tezzer Tezzeret is finally the master of everything. He rules Ravnica. He's appropriated Simic Combine Biomancy, Orzhov Thrall Necromancy, and is a mad science to clone his most hated enemy. Not just to torture his Golgari prisoner, but for the satisfaction of killing Jace again and again at his leisure. His enemies are racked and racked with delightfully appropriate tortures. None of this is enough for Tezzeret. He rules Ravnica, but not in his own name. Killing the mindless Jace clones has grown dull. Even the knowledge that Ral Zarek heats his bathwater is not enough to sate him. Tezzeret serves for, for more power, ever more powers, has never been quenched. With his latest scheme, perhaps, it will be enough to satisfy him. A bid for the godhood of the Planeswalkers of old, correcting the flaws of his former master's plan. But, uh... Get a bit of a, a duel between, uh, Nico and, uh... Tezzeret. And just as the window opens again, Nico planes walks planes walk planes walks away. But um, the the whole plan was for Nico to get uh, gather intelligence, not to engage with Te not to engage with Tezzeret. but Chandra and uh, Guru both. Say that you know if they had been the one to go, they would take the shot too. But uh, Jay says they've they've now lost an advantage. Tether will change the schedule on his immortal sun device. But uh, Dabri Dabri Kane makes it adds a little wrinkle. So, for, but first is there's one more option in the near future. Tether isn't stupid. He'll know he's been betrayed. He'll be dispatching an assassin to kill. Dabriel shortly. He dislikes being bait, so they may as well make it count. And he insists that uh, the plane's walk is dressed for the occasion. And that is where the issue ends. Things are getting interesting. Um, I, I gotta say, the, uh, the tortures of our previous protagonist, oof, oh, that's... Uh, oof. That's just, yeah. Ouch. Anyway, moving on to our last one for the moment. We've got Dark Crisis, number three. We've got actually two covers to show off. The two covers, same issue inside, just different cover art. This is some character sketches of Red Canary. And then for our other cover, we've got the JSA. So, where we left off, uh, yeah, um, society been defeated, but they, they only stopped their assault on uh, Titan's Tower because Pariah told Slade to do so. But, um, things, things are not going well.
Apparently some are hanging up their capes, others want to be with family and friends. Nightwing is at the hospital with uh, Beast Boy, hasn't left, hasn't left his bedside since. Um, there's flowers from the Doom Patrol. Mr. Terrific has said that uh, Beast Boy will live, but uh, they think that the trauma from the attack did more damage than the bullet did. Sandra Cain explains that uh, Young Justice is missing. Uh, with spoiler adding that uh, Wonder Girl, Cassie Sandsmark, took Red Trainer to find them. Um, Damian Wayne is with uh, John Kent's team, though Cyborg reluctantly corrects uh, Barbara by calling it Black Adam's team. And uh, but what Black Adam Black Adam's means of training the uh, the heroes he he wants he, he think believes they should be they, that there's that line that they that most of them say they'll never cross that well maybe it's time they did and Damien agrees but uh, Wonder Girl Yara Floor manages to. Uh, stop him and uh, it seems the league that, that uh, John Kent recruited just fell apart and uh, John and Damien have a bit of a falling out and the fact that uh, well, Damien agrees with, with Black Adam at this point But uh, the JSA shows up with Green Lantern stating that if there's no Justice League, how about a society? Offering to, offering to help, but so long as uh, the young people don't mind some old timers lending a hand. Apparently Wildcat thinks that John should have come to them from the, from the get-go. Um, at Deathstroke's HQ, his uh, society's brought someone who uh, was they found trying to sneak in. Ravager. But she realizes something's very wrong with her father. And as the other members of the society uh, go to stop the attack, Ravager's attack, they too become infected with the darkness. In Sector 666, Riot, on the planet Riot, spelled R-Y-U-T, um, the Green Lanterns are approaching the uh, restored Black Lantern that uh, in an effort to go after uh, Pariah and his, army, and his dark army. Hal, Joe, and Kyle go inside.
Hal makes makes constructs of the of his fallen teammates from the league, or some of some of his uh, fall, some of the fall, some of them who are fallen, some who aren't who aren't fallen, but they're promptly dispelled by uh, Pariah. Turns out that uh, Pariah didn't kill the Justice League, but he's trying to weapon up. He's trying to weaponize them. Hal goes, in, Hal goes into one, but it uh, turns out that uh, the one he's in is apparently Sector John Stewart. Elsewhere, back on Earth, Black Adam meets with someone in a swamp. Say that the heroes left behind, they don't understand. They didn't see what he saw. And Adam says that he thought he could push the young heroes to do what needed to be done. They're too concerned with hope, and well, Adam, Black Adam believes that it's time for doom. And we find out that he's been meeting the person he came, well, the persons he came to meet are none other than the Legion of Doom. Which now counts punchline among its number. But that is where the issue ends, promising that the next issue will be Deathstroke vs. the Legion of Doom. Dark Crisis is getting inter I, I, I kind of like the idea of uh, apparently Pariah trying to weaponize, weapon, basically turn the, the Justice League into weapons. That's an interesting concept, and so I'll we'll definitely see how it plays out. But uh, anyway, that is going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.